Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to explore the concept of a voltage drop. What do we mean when you hear the words voltage drop? Well, it turns out in order to push current or charges through a circuit, you need a potential difference. You need a higher potential on one side and a lower potential on the other side. And so it turns out when current flows through a circuit and current crosses a device such as a resistor, there will be a higher voltage on the left side and a lower voltage on the right side. And so the voltage drop will then define what the voltage will be on the other side. Let's, for example, say that on this side the voltage is 10 volts and a current of 2 amp is flowing. Now, again, that couldn't happen unless this was a complete circuit. So we're assuming that there's a, a, another part of the circuit that we're not seeing. But if this was just a part of, of a complete circuit and a current of 2 amp was flowing through that resistor and on the left side we had a voltage of 10 volts, the question would be what is the voltage on this side of the resistor and what is the voltage drop across the resistor when traveling the same direction as the current. So when we're traveling from left to right, because that's the direction of the current, we expect the voltage drop to exist across that resistor. And we're trying to figure out what that voltage drop is. Well, if we use Ohm's law, and we know that I is V over R, then V can be calculated from that to be equal to I times R, which means that the voltage across the resistor is simply a product of the current through the resistor times the resistance. So in this case, the voltage drop would be equal to the current of 2 amps times the resistor, resistance of 3 ohms, and amps times ohms is equal to volts, so it would be voltage drop equal to 6 volts. So this here would be considered the voltage drop across the resistor. Now also notice that it's only a voltage drop if we travel in the same direction as the current. If we travel in the opposite direction, we have what we call a voltage rise because traveling from right to left, the voltage would increase by this amount. Traveling from left to right, the voltage will decrease by that amount. So what is the voltage on the other side? We started with 10 volts. We had a voltage drop here of 6 volts. So therefore, on the other side, the voltage will be 4 volts. We had a 6 volt drop. Now here we have a little bit more complicated example. We have three resistors in series. We have a 20 volt battery connected to the circuit that forces current to flow to the circuit. We assume the current is going to be in this direction because current flows from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. Notice we have another device here. This is actually not a device. This is what we call a connection to ground or simply we use the word ground. This is the ground or we grounded the circuit which means that we forced this part of the circuit to zero volts. That's what we mean, that here the circuit would be at zero volts. Now since this is a 20 volt battery, since the right side of the battery is connected to ground, the right side of the battery will be at zero volts, and that means the left side of the battery, since the battery provides a potential difference of 20 volts, the left side will be at 20 volts. Now notice as we go around the circuit, the current will flow through these three resistors. In each case, there will be a voltage drop across each resistor. When we get back to here, the voltage should be zero. So now we're going to calculate the voltage drops in each case. Also notice that the equivalent resistance of the circuit, because there's three resistors in series, we simply add the resistors together, and we know that this equivalent resistance would be equal to 10 ohms. Now the voltage drop across the first resistor, let's call that V1. We're going to say that's equal to I1, or simply I because it's the same current flowing through all three resistors. So it'll be I times R1. So in this case that would be, well, what is the total current? For that we need to know the total resistance and the total voltage applied. So we can say that I total, using Ohm's law, is equal to the voltage applied divided by the resistance total, or the equivalent resistance. In this case, that's the 20 volts supplied here by the battery, divided by the total resistance of 10 ohms. So you can see that the total current, in this case, I total, is going to be equal to 2 amps. So we do need to know the total current which means we first have to calculate the total resistance and then take the voltage applied divided by total resistance to get the total current in the circuit. In a case where the devices are all in series, every resistor will have the same amount of current because the current has to flow through each resistor, so it has to be equal. So here we have a 2 amp current 
multiply it times a 3 ohm resistor. And so the voltage drop across that one is 6 volts. So the voltage across, as we say, we always talk about being voltage being across something. The voltage across this device, this resistor, R1, is going to be 6 volts, which means that on the left side, this will be equal to 20 volts. And on the right side, since we have a 6 volt drop, this will be at 14 volts which means on the left side of this resistor will be at 14 volts because there's nothing in between except a conductor. So there's no, essentially no voltage drop, just a very tiny one. We can ignore that. What about the voltage drop across the second resistor? V2 is equal to R, or I should say I, the current, times R2, which in this case is going to be 2 amps, the same current, times 5 ohms which means in this case we have a 10 volt drop across the second resistor. If the voltage on the left side is 14 volts, that means with a 10 volt drop, the voltage on the right side will just be 4 volts, which is the same as the voltage on the left side of that resistor. Now we already know that by the time we cross this resistor, we should be back to 0 volts. Well, let's check to see if that's correct. So we're going to, again, calculate this. V3, the voltage drop across the third resistor, is equal to the current times the third resistor. And so that would be 2 amps multiplied times. It's a 2 ohm resistor. And sure enough, just like we expected, it's a 4 ohm, uh, not 4 ohm drop. It's a 4 volt drop because amps times ohms is volts. There we go. And just as expected, there's a 4 volt drop which means when we get to this side of the resistor, we're now at zero volts. Notice zero volts here, zero volts there, zero volts there. Essentially, there's no voltage drop across the conducting material that connects all the circuit devices. This is the conductor in the circuit. Of course, in real life, there's a tiny little voltage drop. But we're not going to um, worry about that. So we can take a look now. We know now what a voltage drop is. A voltage drop is simply the voltage difference between what the voltage is on the left side of the device and the voltage on the right side of the device. In the case of a resistor, the voltage drop is the current flowing through the resistor times the size of the resistor. In this case, it's 6 volts, and here we can see we have a 6 volt drop, a 10 volt drop, and a 4 volt drop calculated in that exact same manner. And that's what we mean by a voltage drop.